Hi, everyone, and welcome to Outside the Ropes. I'm Tom Hannafin, and I'm joined by Eric Young, who this Sunday, August 27th, live on Impact Plus, Fight TV, and YouTube for our Ultimate Insiders in Toronto at the Rebel Entertainment Complex. He will be going one-on-one -on -one with Diener in a no disqualification match at Emergence. Eric, this is a long time coming. This seemed like something between you and Diener, violent by design and the design that was dead and buried, but you came back from the dead. Yeah, good use of words, dead. If you don't see it, it happened. You know, if, if uh, a tree falls in the woods, you know, we know that old tale. It is a long time. And, and like, Cody is somebody I've known for 20 plus years. And obviously very close at varying stages of our life, very close in and out of the wrestling world. A guy I took under my wing. And in the end, you know, it's gonna end one of two ways. And we saw how it ended. And Virgins is gonna be uh, my chance to set the record straight. Obviously, we saw recently on Access TV how everything played out between you two. Was this something that on your way back to Impact Wrestling, you knew in the back of your mind was inevitable? Yeah, I mean, like, that business wasn't over for me. I, I, I think he thought it was over. He was probably hoping that it was over. But the truth is, that is number one on my mind right now. The number one goal is to sort that out and then to move forward. But I don't feel I can't move forward until that's sorted. And in 27th, no disqualifications, my home country of Canada, friends and family there. We'll probably have a couple special guests from the hockey world in attendance. We're gonna set the record straight that night. I'm a big fan of Dangle Bet Selly, by the way. You gotta check that out. Uh, speaking of coming home, that's basically what Slammiversary was. Nobody knew what was going on, and it was like a ghost had come back. You're teaming with your old coach, former member of Team Canada, Scott Demore. You guys defeat Bully Ray and Diener that night in Windsor, Ontario, Canada, in the vicinity of your hometown, Florence, Ontario. Walk me through all the emotions that went into that night, that return. Yeah, I mean, obviously a very special night in my life, very special night in my career, returning to my home company, returning to tag with one of my oldest friends in the business, a guy I respect a great deal, and, and I might not be sitting here without the help of talking more throughout the years. And like you said, 20 minutes from where I grew up, friends and family who I secretly let them know that I would be appearing that night in, in attendance, and people that I've known for 30 years, people that have worked closely with Scott, um, people I've worked indie shows with. I didn't really tell them what I would be doing, but if they wanted to make their way to a Windsor and check it out. So it was special. I mean, it's a, a word that gets thrown around a lot, but it's not one that I will ever forget. A very special night for me, for many reasons. Long as I've gone without wrestling yeah, yeah, since 1997. So it was a bit of a test for myself as well. One of those things, I'm a, a believer in fate. I have a tattooed on the inside of my right arm and I was standing and in the place that the universe meant me to be, man, that day. When you departed Impact Wrestling late in 2022, how difficult were those conversations? I imagine that one-on-one -on -one conversation with Scott Moore. Yeah, I mean, obviously very difficult. And I think, you know, people closer to me know that, Scott knows that. You know, my wife and, and people that, uh, you know, in my tight, close circle knew that I didn't want to leave. And uh, it was just an opportunity that I, I couldn't walk past. And Scott, I will defend him to the death. And he said, if you don't take it, I'll be mad at you. So uh, once in a lifetime kind of an opportunity. And what I signed up for ended up not being what I signed up for. And the kind of person I am and what I believed in, in personally, professionally, but most importantly, morally, I just couldn't stay. Like I said, I'm a believer in fate, not mad about it, not bitter about it. Disappointed for sure, but the universe has put me right where I'm supposed to be. Sitting here talking to you, working back with impact, everything is right in the world. You and I first met each other, I believe it was in 2016. Yeah. I remember calling your first match uh, in NXT. Yeah. Uh, World-class maniac, it was a big deal. And honestly, in the entire time that I've known you, I don't think I've seen you happier yeah. A bigger smile on your face than the way you were in Windsor following Slammiversary in the lead up to your match with Nick Aldis on Access TV. Yeah. Seeing you with all the other wrestlers, the crew. What was that homecoming like? People that have worked here, you and me, um, it does sound biased, but there's something very special going on here. You know, we're not the, the big dog in the fight. And, you know, we're, I mean, you could classify us as the underdog, which is always something that I've liked. You know, I, I like being the underdog. I like being counted out or pushed to the side. And this is a very special place to work. And that night you're out, you know, you're out celebrating 
the pay-per-view, celebrating the company, celebrating the wins and the losses and whatever happened that night, but as a group, you know, and that doesn't go on anywhere else. That's a, a very singular thing to this place. And it's cool to be part of a team where, you know, there's different personalities and there's different groups. And this guy likes this guy, and this guy doesn't like that guy. And that's gonna go on in every workplace. But in a place like this, you do feel like everyone has their hand on the rope just pulling at the same time. This place has to do well for us to do well. And I think most people here, almost to a man, understand that. And that's special, man. It doesn't exist. You've worked other places. You know, there's lots of people here that have worked other places. There's something very special going on inside this company, inside this locker room, and inside the ring. I think the thing that makes you special as an individual is your ability to evolve and adapt and change. There's very few wrestlers that are really capable of doing that for decades on end. I am old. You have constantly, you have constantly evolved, and to see how you came out in that match I mentioned against Nick Aldis. The entrance, the music, uh, the imagery, and then also the, the doom mask. Yeah. When you're going through these concepts of, okay, how do I want this to look? How do I change this? What are, what, what are the right ways to go and what are the wrong ways to go in your opinion? I mean, for me, I think it's, it, it's the favorite feather in my cap is I have a very singular view, I feel, on the wrestling world because I've seen the cards from every angle. Right, I, I've been the opening match, I've been the popcorn match, I've won the world tag titles with six different partners. I, I've won the X Division world champion. I, I was wrestling women before it was even allowed and before it was cool, you know, uh, uh, tagging with ODB. Still and, hold the record for the longest knockouts, we world never, tag team title. We never right? lost those. No one ever beat us, they took them from us. And, uh, but yeah, I think it's, it's my favorite part, I think, of my career. And I don't know if I'm maybe the best at any one thing, but I'm able to do all things at a very high level and adapt. And I'm a very experiential person in real life. I want to experience everything. I want to see everything. I want to do everything. Good, bad, and indifferent, because I think that makes you a better person. But I think that as far as the view of being able to adapt, is it comes from the desire to do different things. And it's something I heard in a Terry Funk interview. They were asking him, he, he main evented, I think it was barely legal, one of the first pay-per-views ECW ever did. And he was doing an interview and he said, he said, how are you able to still be over for like three decades of wrestling? You're main eventing a pay-per-view, a company that is literally depending on you to carry the load. And he was like 50 something years old at the time. And he said, Terry Funk is always gonna be Terry Funk, but the wrestling business is going to change every day. And if I don't change with it, I die. And it stuck with me. And it's true, like wrestling now, there's things that I will do now and things I believe work that I wouldn't have done 10 years ago because the, the business itself, the idea of what's good and what's bad is constantly changing and evolving. And if you're not changing and evolving with it, you become stagnant. And I don't want to do that. I want to do this as long as I can produce, as long as I can physically do it, I want to do it at the highest level possible. Now that you're back in Impact, you use the phrase unfinished business. Are there still things left that Eric Young has not done? Because at the point you were just making, you've done yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I think there is. And, and I think that's because the business constantly changes, right? The roster constantly changes. There's tons of people here that I still haven't worked with that I would like to. And um, I'm a different version of myself. So having, you know, opponents that I worked during my last run here would be completely a different because we've been approaching it in a much different way. So that's, to me, that's the drug. Figuring out, you know, the, how you move your chest pieces and what, how you go about things. That's the drug for me. And that addiction to that will never go away. Eventually my body's not gonna allow me to do it, right? And, and that's fine. But my mind will always crave that creative side of what pro wrestling is. And that's my favorite part, has been from day one and continues to be my favorite part. The last time, roughly nine, 10 months ago that you were here in Impact, the Death Machines double jeopardy match against Sammy Callahan, violent, bloody affair. Obviously how things played out with Diener, violent affair. This Sunday at Emergence in Toronto, yourself, Diener, no disqualification match. Should we expect anything different? Yeah, it'd be a lot more of the same. That's what a match like that calls for. That's what the history of two men like that calls for. And I've never been a person that tries to set too much expectation, expectations on myself. I'm just gonna, whatever I'm given, in whatever situation I'm in, I'm going to produce the best of my ability. And I know Beaner will do the same. And it, you know, it, it will be violent. There's a lot of personal history there. And it's very personal at this point. You know, as everyone knows, as you know, uh, and it being no disqualification in my home country, 
in Toronto, one of my favorite cities in the world, people will remember it. It will be a special night for me. And I think in a way it will be a special night for Diener. And I think most importantly, we're wanting it to be a special night for people that watch it. So it's uh, something's gonna happen. And I, I got a feeling people are gonna be talking about it for a long time.